Hello and welcome to our channel. If you're new, please subscribe if you are. We are just about to do one of our favourites. It's showbiz, showbiz news. news. Showbiz conflates with film. It's the whole public sphere, isn't it? And yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a really amusing world. And, and yet, it's not for everyone on our channel, a bit no. of gossip. So the best thing is go and watch something else because there's loads of yeah. other stuff on here. So yeah, if we, you like a bit of gossip, stick with us. So this is for those of you who like things like the Desperate Housewives. No, not Desperate. Why do I always call it Desperate Housewives? I don't know, it's really annoying. Real Housewives. It, Real Housewives of. Even I watch that with a, with a bit of a guilty pleasure. So this is a bit of a guilty pleasure. This is like me looking over Nadia's shoulder as she jabbers on incessantly about the Kardashians. Mm. So hit us. What's your first story of the day? Well, Kim Kardashian has been praised publicly for embracing psoriasis face with morning selfie. Oh, when I saw this tinnitus. headline, I thought, oh, come on, we're not really going to see anything. But yeah. actually, she has properly, properly Let's done take a, a selfie. Look. So we're going to show you the photo now. And oh, yeah. that's not dissimilar to... Well, that my... looks incredibly like the one you, the case you had. Well, I get really bad bouts yeah. of eczema and it comes up all over my face. And I've heard her talk about this before and, and sort of really wondered whether it was true. But yeah. there it is. And I, and I do think, I mean, we never see her relatable ever. So I wonder if this is a whole new direction where she's going to become, she's become a lot more politicised. Oh, she's been right. working a lot with pr um, getting unfairly imprisoned prisoners out of prison. Um, Interesting, isn't it? Because so when I saw her in the Oval Office, I considered she was simply a supporter of Trump. No, but no, you're saying she, she wasn't. Oh, no, no, she was oh. a full-on Clinton. She was a full-on supporter of Clinton. Oh, right. Yeah. Can I just um, maybe posit a suggestion? Could her psoriasis in any way have been aggravated by the amount of makeup she wears? Well, I'm sure it doesn't help because I certainly know when I get bouts on my face with the ex, I'm always told not to put any makeup on. But she is a model. Mm. That's her job. So, and I remember actually in one of the Kardashians, shows seeing her say she was absolutely petrified when she first got it because she thought she wasn't going to get booked. I, I'd more imagine psychologically and emotionally, yeah, yeah, you get more stressed because you're going on camera, I'm going on camera, I get yeah. more stressed. And then you've got to put more makeup on and then it gets worse. It's just like so a... she just put morning psoriasis alongside a twinkling star emoji. And actually quite a lot of people have come through and said, you know what, this, this has actually helped me a lot because they've got psoriasis. And the thing is, a lot of people are completely repulsed by skin conditions. They recoil. Mm. I mean, people have said it to me, oh my God, what's wrong with you? And they don't really, you wouldn't really do that with anything else that's and I'd also do. imagine that a lot of people will be like, so the hell what, you've got everything else, a bit of psoriasis, get over it. I mean, there's a lot of po-faced kind of resentment of celebrities who've got everything, isn't there? So there'll be a... Well, I I'm guess not that, one of those. No, I think I'm if not. You're neither rich, am I. I don't think it's a, famous, no. good on you. You know, I don't think it means that you're not going to suffer other things. No, I agree. agree. The next story you're going to tell me about, I just have to draw people's attention to the fact that, does anyone else think that this woman's hairline is getting further and further down her forehead? <clears throat> I'm jealous of her hairline. She's got the thickest hair yeah, Her I've forehead ever... is getting smaller See. and smaller and smaller. Well, tell me I'm kind. I'm not. It's not unkind. It's a description. It, it literally is getting lower and lower. I wonder whether that's because her furrowed brow is bringing her hair forward. This is not the husband. story. The story is no. Teresa Judice from Housewives of New Jersey. One of my absolute guilty pleasures. She and frightens before me. Before you even think about writing in the comments below, I'm so disappointed in Nadia. I didn't think she would Be watch. disappointed. Be disappointed. Yeah, because... I watch the Kardashians. I watch all the Housewives. Yeah. I watch Below Deck. I love it. I love it. I love Can it. Can I just say, I've been... my specialist subject. I've been disappointed in Nadia and you just have to push through it. You have to get through to the other side where once you've been disappointed, you kind of join her. Yeah, and the thing tea. is, there's loads of other things you can watch. Yeah. So nobody tell me off. But the, can I just say this, Teresa, whatever her name is, she frightens the pants out of me. Teresa Judice is part, is, is one of the stars of Housewives mm. of New Jersey and we've watched her through these. She's brought, she always says, brought up all style Italian, brought up all style Italian. Mm. Which basically, as far as I can see, means whatever your husband does, you just accept it and you put up with it. So through the years of watching her on um, on the show, <laughs> she to the point with one particular episode, he gets up from the table where they're all eating, the husband, hits her. goes off and talks to his girlfriend about her and she still won't have anyone say he's had an affair. This man is despicable, okay? Do he then got caught for fraud, mail fraud, wire fraud, and some other kind of fraud. Bloody hell. Yeah. Female fraud. And she had, and she was, she was um, basically brought into the whole case. She ended up serving a couple of years in jail. I remember her jail. going down, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. They both got jail time. He, she went before him. Right. And she still stood by him, right. even though she, he got her in all this trouble. He has now, cut a long story short, he's just done, I think, 
31 months or right. 40 month sentence, something like right. that. Anyway, so it has been the whole time he's been in prison, will he, won't he be deported because he's actually just pure Italian. I didn't know that. He oh, never okay, had... okay. So though I thought he was, he was born and brought up in America, yeah. he's never had his papers. Ah. So it oh, has so he's been, gonna be deported. will she go to Italy with him because she stands by her, stand by your man. Bit anyway. idiotic, but he's, I mean, I've never thought he was a good egg. Horrible man. He's a horrible, horrible. egg. Horrible. Is he a and bad then, egg? And then the whole time she was in prison, he was drinking and drinking. And, oh, yeah. Ugh, disgusting man. So she needs anyway, to get shot at in him. in my opinion. So the American government's doing her a favour. So, he has now left prison and has been taken, and I was jumping about in this, straight to the deportation centre. Bloody hell. So the thing has been the whole time, is she now going to go and live in flame in Italy with her four children, none of who speak Italian, no. just to stand by her man? Well... Da, 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 da. She is finally, and this is a fabulous thing for women's rights right across the world. She is consulting divorce lawyers. Do you think she would if he wasn't being deported? I don't know. I don't you think wonder, so. No, you, do no know, I don't think so. But do you I know why? She, could, could that be because she's scared of him? I don't know if she's scared of him. I think she's just been brought up very old fashioned. He looks Titanic. scary. The thing that was really bad was when she was in prison, her mother got ill. And then when she came out, she only had about eight, nine months with her mum before her mum died. And she has blamed him for that. It's the only thing she's blamed him for. The only time she's got angry is that. And mm. the thing is, I think she would have gone to Italy because still she's doing it for somebody else. It's because the kids, the four daughters, don't want to go and live in Italy. They're all mm. going to college. They don't speak Italian. So she has now consulted divorce lawyers. Yay! Don't Talks wanna, to her like I'm shit. sure some of their friends have ended up under concrete. Anyway. Um, the, you can't say that. Well, you, Take that back, otherwise we could get sued. Allegedly. In it, no, nobody's alleged it. In my opinion. In my opinion, and, I think they're bad eggs. And he hasn't put anyone under concrete. Of course he hasn't concrete. put anyone under You've concrete. Got to say, he hasn't put anyone under thank concrete. Thank you, because we don't want to get bloody sued. What does that even mean? I was drawn to, I'm, I'm drawn to a couple of stories, but off the, off the back of all of the Michael Jackson um, mm. fiasco and horror and real depression, I think, that we've all felt as this story unfolded. Mm. And we sort of, it, it's kind of like, it's not that we didn't know anything already, it's kind of having it confirmed and then having to sort of settle with the news. And mm. so there are two, two concurrent sort of developments to the story. One, Michael Jackson is once again, back in the top 40 after the abuse documentary, Leaving Neverland, which means all of his music is now being listened to. I, I presume that's just sort of curiosity factor, or maybe it's a last hurrah and a farewell to those tunes. Because I heard, I was out the other day, and I heard the, the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy, A, B, C, that came on. And I immediately was like, oh my God, this has been irrevocably changed. Mm. Anyway, the story has shifted over to Paris Jackson. Now, Paris Jackson, you, there was a remarkable detail. Paris Jackson allegedly, has tried to commit suicide. The LA police, LAPD, uh, are saying they were called for an attempted suicide attempt. Mm. But, but they didn't say the name. No, they no. didn't say the name. It could have been a boyfriend, you never know. So um, No, no, but I mean, they haven't said it's anything to do with Paris. No, but presumably they're talking about it in the story because it was the address that they were at. Mm. Mm. So anyway, she's been seen out and about with her boyfriend after the alleged suicide attempt. I mean, she's claiming it's lies, lies and more lies on Twitter yeah. and social media. She thinks there's a load of nonsense. She's been seen out eating KFC, dozing at the wheel of a car and what have you. But um, Can we just pause on the dozing at the wheel of the yeah. car? Because that really struck me. I saw this, this news story this morning and I thought, you know, it... One of the headlines said, Paris Jackson sleeps at the wheel of the car. And I thought, oh my God, she slept at, fallen asleep in the wheel of the car. Yeah, it makes it sound like she's totally out of control. You look a bit further and she's just in the petrol station yeah. and her boyfriend's gone in to get something. And she could have just easily, just have closed her eyes yeah. for a split second. This is the madness of this world. Um, and it just, and I just really felt for her. I thought this poor girl, 20 years old, who would want to, I mean, yes, she's an heiress, this is what everyone always says, she's got all that money, but who would want to be Paris Jackson? I, I mean, what a nightmare. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the LA police did confirm that medics attended her home for an attempt to suicide, but the funny thing about this is, it's how the, the media can, and this is what interests me about showbiz as a topic, how the media can construct a sense of a story when perhaps there's no story there at all. It could have been anyone else at the at the property. Mm. It could have been a lie by, you never, just because the LA police say it, you don't know that it's necessarily true. Mm. Um, 
you know, you then have a photo of her asleep at the car. All of the bits and pieces of the story suggest you a girl clearly out of control, destroyed by the documentary's revelations, on the edge of, of life itself. And she, could, be she could have just been closing her eyes for a minute yeah. as she is in a very peaceful place considering buying a KFC. So, you know, you've got to take these stories with a pinch of salt. But I, what it did make me think like you, this poor, poor girl, because she's probably led the strangest existence up till now as it is. And it's just got a whole lot stranger. And, and unfortunately for her, she is very, very beautiful. Mm. She's a model, she's an actress. Doesn't look anything we all like know who either. she is. Well, apparently Mark Lester claims that he's the father. the father. Oh, right. Um, and Blanket has gone into complete hiding. Nobody sees him, nobody knows what he is. As a right. Father. But she's now out there. Every single thing she does, she's she's recently been in rehab. Right. Um, and I was just reminded, do you remember the Michael Bashir documentary? Yeah. I don't know if any of you remember this, and Michael was talking about when she was born. Mm. And he was saying, um, you know, when she was born, she came the wrong way around, face down, and he was really scared. So what he did was, as soon as she came out, he grabbed her with the placenta still all over her and rushed home to Neverland. Right. And Bashir says, are you sure? And Michael Jackson says, yeah, they said it was okay. They said I wanted to, I want to take her, and they said that you could. And I just thought, well, either that's not true. Well, this is the man. Or, who... or he was so famous and so rich that medical professionals allowed yeah. him to do something well, completely insane. Well, we know that medical professionals were prescribing all sorts of things yeah. to him anyway. Uh, but this is the man who dangled a child over a balcony. So, I mean, his childcare credentials are a little bit suspect. I, I mean, think... and I know all the Michael Jackson fans are going to go ballistic about this, but these are facts. In front of the world press, he dangled a baby out over a balcony. Yeah. He, on, on on a documentary but made by the BBC to Michael Bashir, he said those exact words. He took her, mm. left the mother alone, and ran to Neverland. He's not the sort of doula midwife you really want, is he? And Earth, also, you know, the thing is, if he did do everything that he said, that, that has been said he does, he did, how horrific for his children. If he didn't, how or if his, his children, children never knew, how horrific for his children, oh, everything yeah. that's being said. It's just... Whichever, and that's that's my point, really. That's why I was drawn to the story. I thought, this poor yeah. kid, and now already stories are being constructed. Pressures of being in the public oh, realm. This is, this is a very tragic this is story. This very upsetting story, this. So this is the sad death of Mike Thalassitis, Thalassitis is it? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he look like George Michael? Terribly sad. He was uh, a Love Island contestant in 2017 mm. and he was found Ooh, hanged Mikey. in the local park that he used to play in as a oh child on Saturday. Oh my God. Absolutely horrendous. In public? And the story goes that he was in financial, what had financial troubles. We work, we can't know that. And, but, and obviously he wasn't coping. Mario Falcone has spoken, Mario Falcone from uh, TOWIE, oh, yeah. uh, and said that he had confided in him. Now there's been a lot today, and our girls have been telling us about it in the press, about him being called Muggy Mike. Yeah, in, in fact, Maddie reports, was outraged. Yeah, in all the reporting of his suicide, and his family are distraught about this, because actually Muggy Mike was a not very kind a nickname given to him whilst he was in love. Well, that's Island. where Mario Falcone has actually corrected yeah. them, saying, you know, they portrayed him as this, but uh, he wasn't, he was a proper gentleman. So, yeah. But what I wanted to say about this, really, having been in a soap opera, I was in EastEnders, God, 20 years ago, and I used to watch, um, you know, the youngsters come into it, and, and you come in and then you film for six weeks. So for six weeks, you are in EastEnders, you're, you're working as a, as, as a soap star, but you're not yet a star. And then suddenly that episode will come out and from that next minute you are ludicrously mm. famous. At the time I was in it, it's not because of me, because I was pretty grabbing it, but it had 20 million uh, viewers. It's unimaginable, 20 million viewers. You just, you just honestly, to just mm. have that sudden fame. And I know that people have criticized ITV and criticized the BBC over the years for these things, but actually there's not a lot you can that do. they can do. No. I mean, there really isn't. You can't I mean, manage, you can't you, micromanage their everyday life. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of these, I was very lucky because I came from a family that had always been in the film business. My dad was an mm. actor and my sister was very famous so and absolutely to fabulous. So I was kind, I had a bit of a mm. sense of what it was like and still it was a big shock. So these young kids, they go into Love Island, you've suddenly got a lot of money, you've got people throwing money at you to do all mm. sorts of PAs. You've got people, you're still living in the same area where you grew up. 
you people people are sort of pulling away from you a bit because you suddenly become famous mm. looking to see if you've got up yourself but also wanting a part of the limelight and a part of that money and a part of all of that the glitter and gold of it and I think it's a very, very difficult thing to live through. And that's why I am always really supportive when people go, eh, of, of any kind, whether it's Taylor Swift or when people say, well, you've got fame and you've got money, stop moaning. No, I know, it's, it's frustrating. I mean, it's a it's little bit- It's just a different set of problems. It's funny. It's, but they're still very intense problems. Absolutely. And for me, it's very analogous to a lot of the stories you hear in the football industry. Because of course we hear about all of the famous footballers who earn three quarters of a million every week and what have you. But there's a whole, there's, there's hundreds, thousands of footballers earning life-changing sums of money, but not that much who simply don't know how to manage it. And, and it can lead them into all sorts of strife, emotional strife, social strife, financial, all, all of this. So it, yeah, it's really hard to deal with. It's with. really hard. And, and you know, and, and again, it's highlighted that we have a massive ongoing mental health crisis mm. in this country. And it's still the reason that you're, a, a man under 45 is most likely to die is from suicide in this country. Mm. And that, when, when are we gonna start really tackling what we're gonna do about that? I was drawn to um, the Taylor Swift story uh, where she, uh, what drew me to this story was how much, what's basically happened to generate a story here is she's liked an Instagram post mm. that claims that Kanye West's controversial famous music video was revenge porn. But just- That was quite a long time ago. That was quite a long time ago, but she only liked someone else's post saying, claiming that that video was revenge porn recently. Right, okay. In the last 24 hours. Right. So. Oh, okay. But the power of social media is such now that if someone of obviously her global massive fame likes a comment, oh. it generates a well, story. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's remarkable. Are you kidding me? It's everything. I mean, but it's everything because I mean, this is old. And she will, this is but an she old will, beef, isn't it? But she will know this. She will right. know the power of that like. Right. And to be, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Kardashians and I actually really like Kim and I've heard, I've met a lot of people that know Kim in the industry, mm. PR people and also, and I've never heard a bad word about her. She's a good person, she's a kind person, she goes out to help people. I think she's got caught up with a lunatic, to be quite honest. I think Who? Kanye West is a lunatic. Oh, I see. Right. And I think he's on messianic, he thinks messianic, he's a messianic, yeah. he's messianic, he, he thinks that he, so why he's, do you think Taylor Swift, I mean, his, and I think his he claim thinks he's untouchable. Yeah. And I think that music video, if I had been somebody that was in um, conflict, mm. very well and publicised conflict mm. with somebody, and then they made a video of me mm. naked in bed beside that person. Albeit, albeit alongside Donald Trump's beautiful back. Oh, I mean, it was no, a very great. I, it was a great piece of pop art. It was a great. But yeah. I think that no, oh. but I can see how that would be really actually quite quite traumatizing, and obviously it feels very very personal to Taylor Swift. But there is an element here of it, aren't they aren't they both but, fueling press and publicity around but, everything all the time? I feel like shouldn't she just let it lie? Well, the thing is, Kim Kardashian came out in support of Kanye, mm. saying that it all been agreed. Yeah, it'd there's a phone call. Isn't there? Apparently, it'd there's a phone agreed. call as well. Yeah, Taylor's always. Denied, denied that. that. Mm. Who knows? We could find out down the line that this was all stitch up PR between all of could them. Could well be. Could, could well be. be. I mean, you hear of the these crazy things. world of celebrity. Crazy world you know, of celebrity. I would like to say also, I do think Kanye is very smart and I think he's very talented, mm. but I think he just needs to just get off the pulpit. Yeah, absolutely. Fine. Kylie Jenner. We talked. This is the one we covered the other day, wasn't it? Where she is this? Is it Kylie Jenner, the one with the boyfriend who keeps snogging everyone? Is that right? No, that's Kylie. Oh, sorry, Clo Clo. Oh, Kylie, what's happening with Kylie Jenner then? Well, apparently Kylie Jenner has serious trust issues with Travis, her um, rap artist boyfriend. Right. Apparently. Oh no, Kylie Jenner, this is the story where the best friend This is Kylie, the, the youngest billionaire with the big lips. Oh, right, and this isn't the one who, who was the one who kissed the who Oh was no, the that's friend? her friend, Jordan Woods. Yeah, but that's Kylie Jenner's friend who yes. kissed Travis Scott. No, she kissed Chloe's boyfriend, oh. a basketball player. Oh, Christ almighty. But she's saying it was just a good night kiss. That's a whole right. another scenario. Oh, okay, all right, blimey. But anyway, so she, TMZ, says that she found evidence that he had been unfaithful. What is it with these guys? Yeah, so come on, I mean, what the is Kardashians going on? And this the seems Gen to be a common thing. These beautiful theme. girls with these mm. gorgeous homes that give you these gorgeous babies that are billionaires and you cheat them. But he could is it be because strongly they're not, denying could it. Could it be because the women are beautiful and all these things? But maybe I think men, men get intimidated. Maybe they're not great conversationalists. I think some men get really intimidated. Do you think by, well, maybe by they don't do good chit chat? 
maybe. I mean, but anyway, I think it's really important that we say that he has strongly denied it. Strongly as denied it. He's now our daughter denied. Maddie said all the Travis fans are really annoyed with Kylie because he cancelled his tour, he cancelled everything, he deleted his social media. I think everything to try and prove to her that he didn't cheat and right. he's committed to the family. Okay. This is what Maddie, Maddie says. But he has apparently said, he di this isn't the case, he is totally committed to the family, but he had to cancel something for some other reason. Right. And, um, so it's safe to say things are stormy again in their relationship? Yeah, but that's not their baby if you think you're being clever. Shit, I keep trying to find oh, no, connections. Yeah, I, oh no, Stormy is there. Thank you, so I was on point there with my gag. Stormy's is there, Chloe's See? is true. You're no, true. true. How can you call your baby true? But Two days Kylie after Jenner's... you know the father cheated on you. Well, I think that you're it's calling it. There's a sort of bigger, sort of karmic thing going on there, if you call So Stormy, this clearly is going to be a Stormy relationship from the get-go. Well, who knows? It's only TMZ. But she's the billionaire, isn't she's she? She's billionaire. billionaire. I mean, yeah. she could buy herself another boyfriend. I reckon boyfriend. they're all billionaires. I think she's just the youngest billionaire yeah. in the world, isn't she? It, it's strange, isn't it? You can have all that money, but you just can't buy loyalty, can mm. you? Strange. Mm. Why are they drawn to these sort of supposed, allegedly unfaithful... Mm. Brats. I wonder if Kanye's ever been unfaithful to Kim. No, you know what? There's something funny about Kanye. I can see why he's considered a bit of a, you know, loose cannon and all these things. But there's something about him that's quite... Like can I? Well, no, but there's something about him. I'm, he's going to probably send people out to get me for saying this. There's something about him that's quite... What's it called when you're a bit of a... Bit of a geek. There's something a bit geeky no. about it. It's a bit nerdy. Well, we love a nerd. No, no, no. But when I saw him in those TMZ studios and he was defending some idiotic thing he'd said, yeah. I saw quite a vulnerable person. Oh God, he's I definitely think he's vulnerable. A bit, I think he's just a simple kid. He's just a, you know, a, you know, just think he opens his mouth a bit too much. Yeah, but he's anyway. a terrible show. I mean, it was terrible what he did to Taylor Swift when he got up on stage. I said, totally agree. The award wasn't but for he her. Wasn't it should have been for being Beyonce. Horror, but he's like a great big five-year-old. Plowing around stages, saying ridiculous shit. Anyway, well, that's your showbiz for the day. Oh, that's interesting. Look, there's another one come up there. Ben Fogel, talking about instant fame, the instant fame. Ben Fogel said that he had a breakdown after finding oh. instant fame on Castaway and describes the attention as a drug in the wake of Mike Thalassa's death. Oh, right, okay, yeah, of yeah. course he was one, yeah, And one of the... now we're literally churning out instant celebrities, you know, on mm. Instagram, whatever, and I think there's not that slow build-up to I couldn't cope to. with it in Sainsbury's the other day. I, I mean, when I was in the meantime, I got spotted. I mean, once for me is kind of enough, but twice in two aisles? And it wasn't the biscuit aisle either. Mm, it was serious stuff. It was in the cereal aisle. Anyway. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification I bell. I genuinely don't really understand what's just happened for the last 25 years. <laughs>